Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video I filmed on my channel before. It's palettes I regret not buying. If you've been on my channel before, you know how much I love buying eyeshadow palettes. It's like my favorite thing, it's the main thing I talk about on my channel. So it's very, very hard for me to talk about palettes I don't have because usually I've tried most of the palettes. So if you're curious to see what palettes I regret not buying, then just keep watching. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Happy 2022. Oh my gosh, that's like a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, happy new year. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on my channel. So if you haven't been on here before, you can expect to see tons of new makeup releases, indie, high-end, Sephora brand, Ulta brand, all of the things. I love eyeshadow palettes. I also love new makeup release videos. I like to talk about tan girl friendly makeup. That's like my whole thing because when I first got on YouTube, I had the hardest time finding makeup tutorials from somebody that looked like me. So decided to take matters into my own hands and start up my own channel. So if that sounds good to you, highly recommend subscribing. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. So I have about nine palettes. I tried to really, really, really think about the palettes that I wish I had purchased. So let's start off with the ColourPop Quartz palette. Now there are a few ColourPop palettes that I could add to this list, but I wanted to kind of keep it pretty simple and not make this whole video about ColourPop because there are some neutral palettes that I would like to get my hands on. But the Quartz palette really caught my eye even when it first launched. I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's like this total cool toned, perfect little palette. But I really had to be practical with myself. And the thing is that I have a lot of ColourPop palettes that I still haven't even used. And I've placed quite a few ColourPop orders. So even though I really, really wanted it, I did decide to pass on it for the moment. And I really, really wish I could have it and I mean I could totally see myself maybe getting it at some point in the future. I did check it is sold out so I can't get it even if I wanted to but there's something about this color story I think is so so beautiful and Colourpop's been doing a really good job with their formula so I feel like this would be the most beautiful cool tone smoky eye look palette but so far I've held off and so I haven't picked it up yet but if you guys have any of these palettes I'm talking about today definitely let me know what your thoughts are, if you regret buying them, or if you definitely think I should keep them on this list and maybe pick them up in the future. The next palette I wanted to talk about is one that I saw a few of my friends that do more bougie makeup reviews talk about, and it's the Byredo palette. I don't know, something about this palette really caught my eye. I don't really know much about Byredo other than that they are a perfume brand, I believe. And so I saw this palette and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous but it was so pricey and at first I don't even think you could buy it in the states you had to buy it from Selfridges so I hummed and I hawed and I hummed and I hawed and by the time I had kind of decided it had already sold out and I think it might have been limited edition so I haven't seen it come back but this is another palette I would love to know if you guys own this what your thoughts are if you regret it or not because Again, it was kind of a pricey item. So the next palettes are a group of palettes and they're the Beauty Bay and Disney collaboration. I want these purely because of how much my friend Heather Austin loves them. She has mentioned them multiple times. Anytime she sees them on sale, she'll post about them. And so I'm also curious because I love Beauty Bay's formula in general. And I'm so tempted to buy these when they go on sale but I just feel like I wouldn't reach for them that much. And so I've been holding off, but I feel like sometime I'm gonna crack when I place another Beauty Bay order. And if everything like works out, like if the stars and the moon align, I could totally see myself getting these. And I just love how they did like kind of a different twist on the Disney collaborations because they basically color matched different scenes in different classic Disney films. And that's how they created the color stories for these palettes. And I think that's a really unique idea. There is also a bunch of other stuff that launched with the collection. But honestly, the only thing I've been interested in is the eyeshadow palette. So I would love if they could do a bundle with all five. Maybe that already exists and I just haven't been on Beauty Bay in a long time. Usually I shop on there when a brand from Europe releases something that I have my eye on. And so 
yeah, I just haven't bought anything from them recently, so I haven't picked this up either. Okay, so the next item is actually a blush duo. It's not really a palette, but I definitely, definitely wanted this, but I just can't bring myself to spend the money, and I'm not sure if these are like overhyped or not, but it's the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate blushes. So I think they came out with about four or five of these, and I want to say they're like $75 or $90. I can't remember. I contemplated getting them because I've seen them on sale a few times. I saw them on sale at Nordstrom. I saw them on sale during the Sephora sale, of course. I could have picked them up for 20% off. And I'm tempted, but I'm also like, I don't need it. And so the high price point and the fact that I haven't really heard anybody talk about it keeps me away from purchasing these duos. Okay, the next palette I almost bought, actually the next couple of palettes I almost bought. So the Sugar Pill Fun Size 2 palette. Something about this palette is so cute. I love the color story. It's got more like of a grungy vibe to it compared to the original palette. I still have the original palette. I did declutter it. So all my decluttered palettes I put in like a box when we moved and I still haven't unpacked all the stuff that I was going to declutter because I want to like list it on Poshmark and things like that. So I still have it I think in one of my boxes. So I was like oh my gosh the second one's even cuter and so I was so tempted to buy it. I do believe it's available on Beautylish and so there were so many times where it was in my cart and then I was like Karen you don't need it. You're not going to use it. You didn't even use the first one. So there's no point buying the second one and I'm not like crazy about the sugar pill formula plus now I'm like loving my blends palette from blend bunny so there's really no reason for me to buy more all matte palettes so I did end up passing on it but I do think it's so so cute. The next one is also something that I definitely added to my cart very recently because it was on sale. It's the Wayne Goss tourmaline palette and this was the first one that kind of look like it had my kind of color story. I mentioned that in my new makeup releases video when I talked about this palette when it was first announced. I was like, oh my gosh, I love how like deep and rich these shades are. And so Beautylish had a winter sale over Christmas and the palette was like a little bit discounted and you could also get like the eyeliners with it. So it was about $80 and I definitely like added it to my bag and I, and I thought about it and I was like, oh my gosh, I could film a video and all of the steps you go through when you're trying to decide on what makeup to buy and then I like kind of decided not to do it because I just couldn't justify buying an older palette that most people probably didn't want to see on YouTube. So I passed on it, but I think it's beautiful and maybe someday I will pick it up. Okay, another one that I will pick up if I see a good price on it because it's kind of an expensive palette. It's the Vanity Cosmetics Signature Palette and this one kind of made a splash because I don't think a lot of people had heard of Vanity Cosmetics including myself. I had no idea who or what they were and they launched this palette that was $95 and it was a neutral palette. It does remind me a lot of kind of the vibe of Tati Beauty's Textured Neutrals. Um, is that what her palette's called? I just like spat, spat that out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, is that what the palette's called? <laughs> anyway, it kind of reminds me of that palette. It's very like neutral, but it looks very spency and it has like beautiful peachy packaging and all the things. So I'm very, very keen to buy it, but I also kind of want to see if I can get a discount on it. So. We'll see. I have my eyes open because it's New Year's soon and usually brands have good sales around New Year's and holiday season. So I'm going to keep my eye out, but I'm very curious. I think that's one palette that I will actually pick up if I find it at a good price. Okay, the next one is the She Glam palettes. They are so tempting to me. I don't even have one in particular that I'm tempted by, but a lot of them look so fun and appealing and... I feel like I've seen quite a few people review them and I think I've asked you guys in community posts too like what your thoughts are on She Glam and a lot of you have said that pretty good and pretty promising stuff so I'm not nervous about trying the brand but I also haven't really made the move because I just have so many other palettes and if I can like hold off on trying something that I will but if you guys have any good recommendations for She Glam palettes I would love to hear in the comments because maybe someday in 2022 I'll decide to 
finally try the brand if they really come out with something. I think they're like multi-chromes definitely kind of tempted me because I saw a lot of people saying that those were pretty interesting and they had like multi-chrome eyeliners. They also have these really beautiful like Zodiac palettes that they launched pretty recently and they have some really pretty color stories. So I am definitely curious about the brand in general and yeah, I want to try some of their palettes. So we'll see what we'll do in 2022. Next is one that will forever be on my list. And honestly, I don't think she's going to bring this back. I thought she was going to. I thought I was going to have a chance to get the Charlotte Tilbury Fire Rose Quad, but it never came back. It never came back in stock in the US. I know my friend Charlotte Holcroft had said that they just sold out in the UK like sometime this past summer in 2021. But it never came to the US after that first initial launch and I um, I guess I missed the boat and I'll never know the awesomeness that is the Fire Rose Quad. So I'm, I'm mentioning it just in case somebody knows if it will relaunch. From what I know, it's not going to. So I'm trying to make my peace with it, but I feel like Charlotte Tilbury has so many quads that I'm not interested in. And of course the one I want is probably never going to come back. So a little bit bummed about that, but that is the last palette I wanted to mention in this video of palettes I regret not buying. Let me know what palettes you guys regret not buying. I love hearing from you down in the comments. And uh, I mean, if I happen to have a spare palette that you wish you had purchased, I will definitely let you know. <laughs> Maybe we can help each other out. We can do some trading down in the comment section. So that is everything for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in another video soon. Bye guys!